sick. That one too. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all God's people say, Amen. Father, we just praise you, we just glorify you. And thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign, that you are in control, that you are Lord of lords and King of kings. And Lord Jesus, grace us with the power to believe and understand these sacred words, because they are the words for us of life. So give us life, Lord, give us hope, give us eternity, and help us to anticipate the bigger picture and the bigger things that our God is doing. Glory to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Okay, if you get out your swords, who wrote Peter? Peter. Peter. Peter, who wrote Peter? Peter, what year did Peter write Peter? Now, you're going to get a new factoid today. Do you like new factoids? Yes. When is the first time the church used the cross? Mm. That's a good question. That's your factoid. That's a good question. The first time the church used the cross. Mm. You should notice before you go to bed. 4.30 A.D. Wow. 4.30? 4.30 A.D. And what? When they started making it, it was found in a little house called St. Sabina's. Wow. In Rome? Father? Was it in Rome? We're going to tell you to. Because your focus is off. Does that shock you? Amen? Amen. Okay, First Peter chapter 4. We've been looking at... Uh, Verse number uh, chapter four, we just crossed into um, what, what verse did we go off on? What's that? First verse. First verse. First verse. Okay, well, let's 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 do these verses real quick. I want to get into really concentrating on on how to anticipate, and uh, I want to start by giving you a, how many of you have ever been to a funeral. Now, I, I told you, do you know why the coffin is turned around? It? Did you ever see the coffin wheel dance? Yes. You ever been to a funeral? Yes. yes. Did you see when they come up and turn the coffin around? They How do. have you ever seen that? I do. Yes. I've seen that. Yes. Do you know why they do that? Yes. The feet. It's because <laughs> when they come in, they're walking in. It's their last time they'll be in church. Oh. Oh. And so they come up and they turn the coffin around because they're walking out. Right. You know, you're the only one in your block that knows that. Mm. All, right? All right? So when Sister Marie's in her call, we're going to be turning it around a couple times. Just turning it around. <laughs> we'll be marching it around the church. <laughs> we'll, yes. That's right. we'll be marching. There goes Sister Marie. She's marching around. Her. Do they do that in the Philippines? Turn the clock around? She has the robotic casket that goes around the church. They don't do that in the Philippines? Horizontal, this way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, when you're in the Philippines, no, no. they don't turn it around or anything. Mm -hmm. How do they get down the aisle then? <laughs> well, they have to. They just push around. it down this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the head should be facing the, the altar. Oh, the head. Yeah. Here in the United States. Head so when it goes down, yeah. Alright, just just so you know, okay. Just. <laughs> do you like your factoids? Yeah. yeah. By the way, you will remember these factoids. You know, even you will remember. You will remember the factoids. Okay. The fire and three trials. Fire and three trials. Okay? Now, uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 1. <laughs> Since therefore Christ suffered on the flesh. Did he suffer on the flesh? Yes. Alright, what's the flesh? The sorrows. The sorrows. Okay, why? Because if you, if you put a little note there, the flesh has to suffer. Now, is anybody living in the flesh? Yeah. Uh, Sometimes. Now, the flesh has deep meanings. <laughs> Meaning, number one, it means your physical body. Number two, it means your, your fight against God. Number three, it means living in the appetites. Right? How many have ever overeat? No, but did you ever say, set up, set up, set up? <laughs> Okay, that's, that's our Filipino language for 
Ooh, that's good. It's good syrup. It's really delicious. Okay? Oh, by, by the way, do you know Asperna? Who is that? Yeah. You know Asperna? Yeah. Your mother died, okay. So, um, so the flesh is here. Now, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 2, Jesus took on this flesh, and of course, uh, the full flowering was on Christmas Day, to walk through in this flesh with all of its attacks to say, I'm going to get through without sin. Now, when you take on the flesh, how many have ever had your flesh scream at you? It's called physical pain, it's called emotional pain, it's called spiritual pain. Your flesh ever do that? Yes. And see, there's sometimes, everyone in here might have said at least once in your life, I want to die. <laughs> because your flesh was, your flesh is going there anyway, isn't it? <laughs> And then when they, they pump you with formaldehyde and we look at you, we look in the box and we'll say, doesn't he look so good? He's dead. We're going to have nightmares tonight. He's <laughs> dead. Okay, so that's the flesh, okay? That's the socks. Now Jesus, and also by the way, put in there with the socks, put in there temptation. So why did I bring up all the death stuff? Because that's the birth of anticipation. Anticipation is the idea that at the end, I'll give it the way Paul says in Thessalonians, console one another with this message. So when the person is dead, that there's going to be a family reunion. How many after a person dies talk about heaven? Okay, do you ever mention heaven to the de uh, deceased family? Yeah. And you say, oh, they're with God now and everything else. Of course, you all canonize the person, right? <laughs> you all say they're with God, even though they were drunk and they beat their wives and everything else. And, but they always have it in a little row boat. You know, do you ever do that? Do you ever shake your head? Yes. So, anticipation is always speaking of the coming of the Lord. Do you do that all the time? You can't have anticipation, right? Anticipation is not the catch-up bottle. Just slowly coming out. What is the anticipation of what I'm going to get? So let's look at this here. Um, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same thought. Forever suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Okay, now, that's, that's one of the most difficult Bible verses to interpret. Do you see that there? When you suffer in the flesh, you cease from sin. How many ever had pain in the flesh and you scream? Never happened to you before? Mm -hmm. Now, usually when you suffer in the flesh, sometimes we're flat out. Anybody ever get the flu or sick? Mm -hmm. I remember I had pneumonia once and bronchitis, and I was out for a straight week. Mm -hmm. And I lost five pounds, so I was really looking good there. <laughs> and I just said, I just couldn't move, I couldn't eat, uh, nothing, nothing looked good. I didn't, want, I didn't want to be near anybody. I just, so was I out sinning? No. So when the flesh is attacked that way, when you're in the flesh, what do you got to do? Do you think about going into sin when you're in the flesh? No. So when the attacks on the flesh come, you stop sinning. You get it? But go back to part one, the way Jesus did. Now, is your flesh going to suffer? How many have interesting bodies here? Yes. yes. Do you know when you're over 60, you know what your favorite word is? Ouch. <laughs> Michael, did you hit those Ouch. ahs yet? Uh, too, Peter, young. did you hit a few ahs yet? They're too young. They're too young. They're, they're too, too young. young. They don't have ashes. Brother, Mike, Brother Michael won't hit until 80, he'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sees his son Michael, like, hey, his son's a good dad. <laughs> you got the issue. So, so understand the flesh. So, what do we got to do? What's the anticipation? I got to look beyond everything that there is and go into glory. Amen. And you're going to see this in a minute. In a minute, um, we're going to get into the most incredible way that you can know and live in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Completely new material. Ooh. 
It's unbelievable. It's so incredible what, you're, what we're going to learn today. Okay, everybody got that? Sister Marie? Yes. You got it? Yes. Okay, so since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, did he? All right, so what have we got to do when the attacks come on? We've got to put them to what? Death. And say, you don't take over me anymore. Amen? Amen. Now, your destiny is not that you accomplished anything. Your destiny in God is not your accomplishment. Your destiny in God is that Christ won in your life. That's anticipation. Is that good? That's really good. So, it goes on to say there, verse number two, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer by human passions, but by the will of God. Now, we're going to keep, we're going to keep a concept that is really, really going to be wonderful. This is going to shock you. The way to follow Jesus is easy. Because he said so. Matthew eleven thirty. Take my yoke, it is what? Easy. But when you and I think about it, we say, no, it's not. But what do you got to do? Get connected with the will of God. When you do the will of God, here's what happens. There's a flow of life. And then there is, when the flow of life starts, there's a transformation in you. Guess what, beloved? Many of us have not been transformed. If you are transformed, some of the signals that you should have in you is this. I can't hate anybody. I don't want to hate anybody. I can't speak evil to anybody. Right? Anybody transformed here? That's transformation. And many of us will come to church and we'll have our own particular struggles and guess what? We do the same thing. Let me, let, let's check to see if you're transformed. You go to confession. I, I brought this up about a million times. You do the same things? Yes. You're not transformed. You're still... What's that? That Michelle sitting there. You're still doing the same thing. Amen? Yes. Amen. Because why? Right there, verse 2. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. This past week, I, uh, I had a, a beautiful thing happen. We're preaching Bible study in, in my little new parish where I am. We had standing room only. Nice. Wow. It was nice. And there was one man that's really into it. And he's not into any spiritual renewal of it, but he's taking everything we're saying so serious. And the talk is on Ephesians, don't use foul language. Hmm. He comes up to me last night and he says, you know what? I haven't said foul language in one week. Oh, wow. Now, you, you have to laugh. You have to laugh. Because he says, I haven't given anybody the four letter words. But he was being transformed right yeah. now. That's right. Absolutely. That's a big deal. So, I, so what, what did I see? I've seen human transformation in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask you a question? Are you transformed? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, then you can't anticipate. Okay? So, building on this. Let the time, uh, verse 3, that is past suffice for doing what the Gentiles like to do. Now, an interesting thing about Gentiles, uh, what, what is the Greek word? Ethne, remember? Now, <coughs> does everybody remember when the time of the Gentiles began? When the temple was destroyed, very good. The temple was destroyed in 586 B.C. And then all of these weird uh, kings came in. Darius and Cyrus, Nebuchadnezzar. You probably heard of a few of them. When the Jews no longer became a religious power in the spirit, the time of the Gentiles came in. So we now live in the time of the Gentiles. Paul saw the Jews totally not listening to the Spirit of God. And what did he say? I'll go after the Gentiles. Acts 13. So, what do Gentiles do? You 
hear it all the day. Pahare, pahare, right? Drink. Anybody have an interesting Thanksgiving dinner with? The guys are in one room. The girls are in the other room. The guys are watching the Detroit Lions. And they all have what? Beer. Beers in their hand. And the girls go, <laughs> My little great nephew was at the meeting. And the mother, Dee Dee, says to me, my, my son was never in my arms all day. He's been passed mm -hmm. like a football all over, the, all over the house. And what were they doing? So what would people do? Drink, 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 right? Eat, 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 burp, burp, burp. So what's the time of the Gentiles? Now, this is preparing for what? When you see the time of the Gentiles fulfilled, what's the time of the Gentiles? Fulfilled, Romans 11. When the time of the Gentiles fulfilled, it means those in the Gentiles who are going to be called to Christ, who accept the call, when that full number is in, then the Jews will come in. So right now, we're still in the time of the Gentiles, but I believe it's ending because we're starting to form a one world religion. Mm -hmm. And many in the church are playing right into it. Mm -hmm. And it's upsetting me very much. So, so if you circle the word Gentiles, so every time when Paul writes the word Gentiles, do you understand a, a nuanced sense of what he's saying? So when the time of the Gentiles be, begin, all the way back in 586 BC, why do the Jews right now, the Orthodox Jews, want the Temple back? Because they want the time of the Gentiles to be over. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Every time the Gentiles attacked the Jews, you know what happened? There was a new Jewish feast. When Ahasuerus Xerxes attacked Esther, we have the feast called Purim. A Gentile king attacking the Jews. Next, also we had to um, Antiochus IV Epiphanes. He's called the Antichrist in the time of the Maccabees. So what happened was he attacked Jews, Jews, Maccabees rose up, and guess what feast started? Hanukkah. So every time the Jews were very, very persecuted, they raised up and said, we're not going to be defeated. And then, because this is the time of the what? Gentiles. Fast forward to the time of the Lord Jesus. Who was in power? Rome. Were they Gentiles? Yes. Were they well liked? Yes. So what was God's answer? What was the Jewish answer to the Gentiles, the Romans, the cross and the resurrection? Now, if we're going to have the gift, a long explanation, if we're going to have the gift of anticipation, our focus, ready, is not just the cross. That's very Catholic Western, isn't it? If you go Catholic Eastern, that's never the focus. It's always the resurrection. When you read the book of Acts, you've got to say one thing. He's alive. Why is there no transformation and why do you worry a lot? Did you ever worry before? Why do you have anxieties? Did you have anxieties before? Do you know why you have anxieties and worries? Welcome to the second reading today, right? because you didn't have any anticipation in you. It was dead. You had no anticipation. Why? What did you used to do? You sat back and said, how am I going to work on this in my power? What did you say that really scared the hell out of you? What am I going to do now? What am I going to do if I lose my job? Did that ever cross your mind? Work in McDonald's or Wendy's. But what did you say after that? It's not going to be my bills. Then you didn't understand another thing. You didn't understand how to be content. You know what content is? Satisfy for what you got. And never seeking something more. How many are passing content? This is the gospel. Right? Does everybody understand the Gentiles, the word Gentiles? It's a long explanation. I never gave that explanation before. But it's, but, but it's a very powerful explanation of what's going on here. Now, 
Go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3. So what is he saying there? Who's on the throne at this time? Nero. Everybody know about Nero, don't you? Oh, yeah. He called himself the God of Gods. They like to call themselves that. Hmm. Verse 3, let the time that is past suffice for doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness. So what do Gentiles do? Party! Party! What do your kids do? Party! Having fun. One woman gave her a daughter this advice. I will never give you my advice. You know what the purpose of your life is? The daughter said to her mother, true story, she said, have fun. The mother said that? Yes. Wow. The purpose of life. Mm. And the mother was in the 80s. The mother said, the purpose of your life is just to have fun. Mm. So guess what's happening? She set her daughter up for failure and no anticipation. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what do you hear when at the funeral mass? You hear a lot of anticipation. Do you ever pay attention to Mass with the words being said? Did you ever read at Mass? Anticipation. So now, let's go on. So, don't live like this. We're going to give you now, um, we're going to give you the path to focus in on anticipation. It's a phenomenal path. It, it, this is so good. And then what happens? Licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, lawless idolatry. Verse 4, they are surprised that you do not join them in the same while profligacy, they abuse you, so everything is party, just join us. Now, <coughs> here's the shocking thing. It's harder to be a, it's harder to go to hell than it is to heaven. So guess what we all do? We choose the harder path. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus says, I will take care of all your burdens. Is that easy? Here, take them. But what do you, you and I do? No, I'm going to keep them because I'm miserable and I like to be miserable. <laughs> and anybody around me, I'll make you miserable too. Right? I get really this. Now we're going to. This is this is one of the most powerful Bible studies you've ever been to. We're going to tell you how to get transformed because you, many of you are not transformed. Right? Are you passing my test? I'm giving you my transformation. No, then you're not transformed. Okay, amen? So, let's go on. He says there, and, and look at verse 5. They, they will give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. So, underline that. We get that in the Creed, don't we? Do you know every line in the Creed, the Apostles' Creed, is found in Scripture. You can, so, you know, when you go to other Protestant churches and they'll say, give me an account of the... Um, of what you believe. So when you memorize, and you should all memorize the Apostles' Creed, you all have it memorized? Yes. Every, every line comes somewhere from the Scripture. You cannot have the Apostles' Scripture and accept that it's based, how many teachings are in the 12? Uh, the uh, Apostles' Creed 12. There's 12 major teachings. Do you know all 12 major teachings? That's what I thought you would say. So, uh, So here, here is, if you underline that there, the judge of the living, those of us who are alive, mm -hmm. because those of us who are alive are going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when Jesus comes, let me know we're out of here. And when are you going to be judged? Immediately. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, we go to heaven or hell. Right? Immediately. Perfect. And then in the end, there'll be the final judgment. Yes? Mm -hmm. And then you give an account of everything you said. Mm -hmm. Everything you did. There'll be two books open. Revelation 20 is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And number two, all your deeds will be there. All the dying that you've ever done. It's all going to be there. Are you ready for that exciting day? The Lord's going to say, Sister Marie, front and center. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting this? So the judge, the living, <laughs> judge the living of the dead. But we're going to teach it to anticipation now. Amen. Okay, I'm just building up. But this is why the gospel, verse 6, was preached even to the dead. Remember, that's called the descent into the what? Dead. Now we looked at 1 Peter chapter 3. This is where the doctrine is. 1 Peter 3, 18, 19, 20, 21. He preached to the dead. Here's the second, here's the second reference of preaching to the dead. Everybody got the two references? These are the two references. Okay, good stuff. Well, uh, that though judged in the flesh like men, they might live in the spirit like God. So what, what happened is they were already 
judged because they're already what? Dead. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But what Jesus did is he preached there. He, they got the opportunity as they lived their lives of righteousness before to be fully redeemed and taken. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 on the way to heaven. It's called Jesus' train. You got that? Now, uh, and then they, they can live in the spirit, the pneuma. Okay? Now, now we're getting excited. All right, so our, our goal is to get you to anticipate. Ready? How many have anticipation? Now, if you're transformed, you can never have a glum death. Are you transformed? I think Max is transformed. Brother Max is always smiling. I think he, he can plug in the plane to the Philippines and put all the electricity on. And they're just. Okay. So, ready, ready to save your anticipation? Ready to go? The end of all things is at hand. You always say the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. Now, we're going to build on building into your anticipation of, of what it is. So, let's go here. Now, let's look at some Greek words. Because if you don't look at the Greek words, you, you miss or you misinterpret it. So, the end of all things is at hand. The Greek word for end is telos. Everybody say telos. Telos. All right, I will tell you. <laughs> all right, now telos means um, it's never used as chronological. It's never used as time. It means that it's consummation time. When did Jesus say consummation time? He went to the cross and what did he say? It is finished. Tell us it's time, right? It is finished. So there is coming a consummation of all things. And uh, it means the end of all things is at hand. To tell us, it means the goal has been reached. The goal is upon us. Okay, so what is Peter saying? We've got to anticipate what Jesus has done and the goal being reached. Okay? How many believe the goal is reached by Jesus Christ? Then you can be transformed and you live a whole lot differently. Sadly, most of us, even right here, most of us are living in the mundane. Did you ever go to church and think about the bills you got to pay? About what you got to do next? How many ever had 100% participation in church? Very rarely, isn't it? We're thinking about all the other things that we, we walked in with. So how many know you're not transformed? You're still thinking about the mundane, right? What am I going to do next? And what am I going to do at 4 o'clock? And, and so, so you're not transformed? So you're losing the whole sense of being what? Anticipating what's coming. You're anticipating paying your bills. You're anticipating is the car going to make it. You're anticipating whether you're going to have your job or not. You, you're going to lose the anticipation. You're going to lose it. Amen? Are you getting this? Yes. So it means conclusion. It's assessed. It means completion. Now, look what he says here in verse 7. The end of all things is, and therefore keep saying and sober for your prayers. For your prayers. Now, the time is coming, uh, coming near. It does refer to the coming of Jesus. So this is how I think eternally. When we do Life and Spirit Seminar, we have a thing called transformation. And probably most of you have been through Life and Spirit Seminars. And we have a talk on transformation. That's a miss, uh, not enough emphasis on that. You're going to be so different that you got to know that you don't walk on the earth alone, right? That your focus is 24-7, 365, 366 leap year with Jesus. Yes? So, the, so here he says there, um, verse 7, uh, the end of all things is at hand, and the, the literal Greek doesn't say at hand, it means the literal Greek is, it's come near. For example, how many heard in Philippians today, in chapter 4, verse 7, the Lord is near. That does not mean the second coming. How many thought it meant the second coming? If you, heard, if you heard a preaching on the second coming, it doesn't mean the second coming. The Lord is near means in everything you're going through, He's right here. So the context is here. Not that He's near knocking at the door. So stay in the context of what Paul was saying today. He's saying He's here. So the Lord is near. He's like right there. So you don't have to go too far. He's right here. Amen? 
So if, if you put there, the Greek says to come near. And here, what, what it says, it's a process with approaching the nearness of God. Now, here's what happens when you anticipate. When you anticipate, you're constantly walking closer to Jesus. Right? Yeah. It's a process, but you're getting closer. Then you're being transformed. Now, how do you know, let's see if you've got an anticipation, and let's see if you can understand what I'm saying. If you're doing that, you don't live the life that you used to live. And secondly, is you, you, you see the better, it's getting better and better and brighter and brighter. You're exchanging the better for the, what, the best. And then when that happens, guess what happens to you? You receive more of God. And guess what happens to you? You come closer to God. And by the way, if you come closer to God, the people that you live with aren't going to like it. Because you're going to be a different person. And that's why they want the old you back. Amen? Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Now, this, this is the basis of living in anticipation. What does he say there? you got to be sane. It, we, we've got to be sane. This is the, this is the state. This is, this is in your right mind, right? Well, in your right mind, and it means that you're going to be pleasing to them. It means that you're going to be faithful. It means <coughs> that you, you put God on your calendar, that you are in watchful pursuit. You keep saying, Lord, is it now? So he, said, he says there to us that if you're going to have this walk with God, there's going to be three things to totally have your life unburdened. Ready? We're going to give you how to live in anticipation and as we build on, on these great verses of Peter and how to get through all your fiery charges. Yes? And so, if you're underlined there, you've got to keep saying. If you're, if you're anticipating, you're in your right mind. What's the greatest attack that you'll ever experience today, tomorrow, and the next week? Arrows on your mind. Remember, when you come into a salvation with Jesus, Salvation is not just getting your sins forgiven. It's living the entire life. You see, when we do, again, we do Life and Spirit seminars or they talk about salvation. They'll say you've got to be saved from your sins. Absolutely correct. But again, how to live, how to live the rest of the life. Are, are, are you all living the rest of your life? Are you all living in the power of transformation? That's who you are. If you're not, you can't see what's coming. And guess what will happen? will be caught off guard. Now circle the word there, sane and sober. Okay, anybody ever have a few too many? <coughs> that means you got drunk. Mm -hmm. When you got drunk, you didn't know who you are, where you are, or why you are. <coughs> right? So, what have we got to be on this day coming? You got to be sober. You got to be in your right mind. What's the world going to call you? Crazy. Mark 3, 21. <laughs> so when you're being transformed, and going from, as Paul would say, glory to glory, guess what's going to happen to you? People aren't going to like it. Because you don't look like me. In fact, you have you, you have left the world of the what? The Gentiles. We're Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But we've left the world of the Gentiles to enter into the realm of glory. We all come from different countries. We all see destruction in our own countries. But now, we, we've taken on a new status as sons and daughters of God. Yes? So if you circle the word there, if you circle with me, sober for your prayers. Now, the prayers here, the prayers that Paul speaks is, uh, or Peter speaks is in the plural. Um, when, when you have this, it, it means, <coughs> I want to give you the three paths to really gain in your, your anticipation. Ready for this? Now, I asked you a million times, and now, yeah, after a million times, you're starting to say to me, you get no right answer. Are you holy? You always would say what? No. Yes. Yeah. Now, there's three levels that you've got to go in to live a life of anticipation. If you do this, it'll transform you, and you won't let the, this earth bother you anymore. Okay? The first thing is, uh, there, there's three things. The first path is called the path of holy. Now you've got to be holy. Does that scare you when you hear that? We're going to go through what that means. It means my relationship to God. So how can I stay sane in this world? It's about my walk with God. 
Second, and we're going to explain each of, each of the points. It, it's going to be the love of the brethren. It casts out a multitude of what? Sins. Mm -hmm. The third thing is service. How do you say service in Greek? Diakonia. Wow. Diakonia. Diakonia. And then we're going to get into a section, verse 10 and 11, on the power of the Holy Spirit. And each, each of you <coughs> transformed, you are so unique that even the gifts that you have with the Spirit are so incredible, they're different than anybody else. And I'm going to show you something. We're going to go through all the words in the Bible on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's going to, it's going to excite you. Because you never looked at it like this. Then we're going to look at your own personal lives. I'm going to show you your uniqueness in God. Okay? Okay. Even the Doria. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, so let's look at, let's look at, this, this is the path to what? Holy. This is the path to anticipation. Oh, yes. Okay. I got to be holy. Are you holy? Yes. Yes. Do you love everybody? Everybody. And service, you have diakonia. All right. So now, what does it mean to be sane? What does it mean to be sane? And uh, and uh, sane. What does it say there? Sane and sober. Here's what the Greeks say. You have to be sane and sober. Look, I can touch my nose there. Okay. <laughs> to be sane and sober. It means you've got to be pure and right. It means if you anticipate, you have a life that's unhindered. To break it down more for us, you, to say means you have sound judgment. If you're going to be transformed and anticipate, you've got to be thinking with sound judgment. I call sin sin a spade a spade. I know what God wants. I know the falsehood when I come, which I just anticipated this, which, uh, which I just saw this week in our church. Incredibly evil. And the second thing is that you will have these two words together, sane and sober means that you're saved in your mind. Your mind is renewed. Now, if you live these, this plan that God gives you, you will be in your right mind and you have anticipation, you will be transformed and your life will be totally different than right now. You ready to march around? Now, I'm begging you to do something for the rest of your life. For God's sake, save your mind. Amen. Now, anybody, get, anybody over 50 here? Actually, over 50. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody just turned 50? Did you have your 50 party yet? Michael's not even confessing that he just turned 50. <laughs> he, wants to, he wants to look for Ever 39 there, okay? Okay, they, they had a 50th party for him. Peter Pan himself. Okay? Brother, Brother Michael is Peter Pan, yeah, yeah. Very funny. <laughs> okay, now. So now, I'm, I'm saying that you've got to save your mind if you're going to be transformed. Amen. You know why? Somebody's going to need somebody like you soon to have a mind that's together. Because you're not going to lose it, what's coming up upon the earth and what's already here upon the earth. Amen? Amen. So now, what you got to do is you got to guard it. Now, in Colossians chapter 3, we've been there many times, Paul says, fix your mind on the things above. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Set your mind. Remember? How many think for the rest of your life you can fix your mind in heaven? Now, I think I drive people nuts because I'm always talking about Jesus. And guess what? Your average person doesn't want to hear about it, right? So you have three kids. Do they want to hear about it all the time? So you got to fix your mind on the kingdom. There's the anticipation. Are you getting it? Yes. What do you say? Colossians chapter 3. Now, 
This is used, if you hold your spot with me, make a left, go, go to Romans 12. We're trying to get anticipation flowing through us. Romans chapter 12. Verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I bid everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, which each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. Now, when you get into your sober status in the spirit, there's certain things that God's going to do to you if you're going to be transformed. He's going to give you grace by measure, according to your what? Faith. How many want some more grace of God? How many want God to tune it up? And then we're going to break down soon the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to show you a unique side of yourself you didn't even know you were. And I think when you do that, you're going to join Marie and march around the church. Because everybody here, everybody here is the Holy Spirit. You are as unique as a snowflake is. Yes. That's interesting. Now, watch this. When you're in the Holy Spirit, when you're in the Holy Spirit, you are as unique as a snowflake when you're in the Holy Spirit. Even with your gifts. People around this town have some of your same gifts, but not like you have it. Not like you have it. When Paul speaks of the gifts of the Spirit, he puts them in categories. Many people can have that gift, but it's not the same as the other person has the gift. Not, and it's so unique that only that person can do what they do. So within the gift. Within the gift. There's, there's differences. There's differences, yes. That's interesting. And that's who you are. That's who you are in the spirit. That's what Peter's saying. We're going to explore that more. you got to hold on there, okay? Amen? When he gives out the gifts, he, when he gives, gives them out the gifts. so precisely. He's so precisely, yes. But it's so you. It's for you. Yeah. It's for you, and when you do it, like I know this lady that she does colors all day long in her, in her kitchen, but when, when you do it just uniquely you, right. no one else can do it. That's interesting. No one else can do it like you can. It's, it's incredible. It is. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit begins to explode in you. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready to march along here? <coughs> now, when you have this, a sober spirit means, when you're in a sober spirit, <coughs> it means you have a clear mind. It means you're alert. It means you'll always be watching. It means you're <coughs> always of good cheer. And when you have good cheer, you will always, always be watchful for him coming. Anticipation. There it is. When you have a disposition in the spirit, because Jesus said it, John 16, 33, you will have a lot of tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's anticipation. How many know when Jesus said that in John 16, 33? Right when he was ready to walk to Gethsemane, how many know he was giving them such an empowered pact on, on anticipation? Do you think they picked it up? I don't think so. Do you think we're picking it up? Do you think the people who came to church today have anticipation? No, they don't. What would happen if we had anticipation here? Everybody would sing. Everybody would be glorifying the Lord our God. Amen? No cares at all. Amen? Are you getting this? Now, this is your ability to think eternally. Now, if you look there in verse number 7, verse number 7, notice there it's, it's uh, the words in the plural, prayers. Now, here's another shocking thing. You ready? Turn to the person next to you. This is really good stuff. Ready for this? You ready for this? You do not pray for your answers.
It's not about praying for your answer. That's not anticipation. That's true. <laughs> Sister, what did Lord just say? Shut your mouth. <laughs> yes. Stop the thinking <laughs> and trust in me. You know, that's what he's saying. You know, because, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but a lot of times I'm praying the same thing every night. Every mass, you know, you're asking for salvation for this one, for that one. <laughs> what are we doing? We're waiting for that answer? We're going to get it anyway. Stop asking. It's not about answers. <laughs> so how many ever prayed for answers before? Don't do that. <laughs> you ever prayed for answers? Have you got them all the time? No. No, because you're not supposed to pray for answers. <laughs> Did you ever pray for answers? All the time. <laughs> Larry, would you remove this woman, please? It's not about answers. It's about what? Your relationship with God. I told them today, I said, I keep saying the same thing to you. Hello. Now. <laughs> enough is enough. <laughs> here's what prayer says. Circle the word. Why is it plural? It's plural because we keep doing it. Hmm. Here's what it means. It means I touch the heart of God. Oh, wow. Amen? Mm -hmm. wait, wait, wait. Now, when you think like this, you are not victimized by your emotions anymore. You, you, you're not an emotional wreck. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you do this, when you do this, you have new attitude adjustments. But this is getting deep, isn't it? Yeah. Now let me show you a passage in the Bible where you can anticipate. Okay? You, you ready to go? Yeah. And you know what's interesting about this? Because St. Peter helped Mark dictate the Gospel of Mark. Wow. He helped Mark do that? Yeah. That's why it's the first Gospel written. All right, go with me to Mark 14. Good stuff? This is fantastic. <laughs> Who wrote Mark? Who wrote Mark? Mark. It's Peter Shelley. Maybe Peter helped you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Peter, when you go to Peter's house, you're going to look at, there's two cities behind there that Jesus scalded in Matthew 11. You're going there, you're going to look at them. Um, Bessa, uh, Bessaida and uh, woe are you, Bessaida, woe are you, Corusaida. You're going to be walking through there. Are you excited, Brother Peter? So Peter, you can see a lot of new things. Okay, everybody with me in Mark? Yeah. Who wrote Mark? Mark. Now go to, go to, uh, some, someone took out of my Bible Mark. I won't be mad if you put it back in right now. Matthew, Mark, okay. Mark chapter 14. If you go down to verse 37, please. Mark 14, 37. Mark 14, 37. Okay, everybody with me? Chapter 14. Go to verse 37, please. 37 to 35. 37 to 35? 37 to 40. 37 to 40. Now, what did Peter fail to do? Anticipate. Yes. But notice what Jesus was doing. Always anticipating. Right. He never stopped. That's why Hebrews 12 says he had joined his heart because we all laid before him. Does everybody here knows what lays before you? Yes. I'm getting a brand new body. I'm going to be out of here in a few years. Right. God has put on me a heart to do things for Him. I'm anticipating, anticipating. And Lord, I just want to be part of. Uh, I just want to be part of the Holy Spirit project You got for me. L listen to people, Sister. This is awesome. And He came and found them sleeping. Now, if you underline there the sleeping, the sleeping is because, not because they were tired, but because they heard the news. What was the news? The Son of Man will be rejected. He'll be scourged. He'll be crucified. 
And then, notice Jesus didn't stop there, but they didn't pick it up. So why did they fall asleep? They lost their anticipation. They couldn't see anymore. So what did they do? This is called, if you put a little note there, the sleep of sorrow. Do you know a lot of people have the sleep of sorrow? Uh, what's the use? You ever hear that one? Forget it. Okay. And then he says there, and he said to Peter, Simon, Shimeon, are you asleep? Now, why is Jesus saying that? <laughs> it's Passover night. Why is he saying, are you asleep? I, I think one main reason, because you, you're supposed to, it's Passover night, you're expected to be up all night. All night That's why in the church, it should be open to midnight. And if you get your uh, others about you, it should be up more. Praying. Because why? Because the Jews believe this is the hour when Messiah will come. So that's why he says, are you sleeping? Do you understand Jesus' question there? Th then he says there, could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's the flesh again. Yeah. When you have anticipation, your spirit finally overcomes the flesh. Now remember, if we do these three things flowing with God, you're going to see here the flow in the Spirit to make life easy for you in the Spirit. Okay. Did you notice the great saints after they conquered? Yeah, they had our problems. Yeah, they had our bodies. But guess what? It didn't seem to really flow for them. Rocky road. It was rocky, but they overcame it. Were they deterred? No. Did they fall apart? No. They kept going. And that's the way it should be with you and me. Then he says there, Indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So this is, when, when we have prayers, what's another meaning Jesus is saying? Why don't you stay up that one hour? What's the one <coughs> hour? The suffering. Why did why did you why did you why are you falling apart? Right. How come some, some people here are falling? If you're if you're falling apart, guess what? You're not being transformed. You're not living the fullness of your salvation. You see, what we have done to you is this. We said, "Are you saved? Salvation." And the only thing we did for you is stop you right there at the cross. We stopped you there. The cross is a powerful I, I, I can never exhaust the, the riches of the cross. But guess what we did? We stopped you right there. And because we stopped you right there, our people are not being transformed. So our language to one another daily is, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> our language daily is, for me. Okay. And guess what? You don't have mercy. And this is the New Year mercy. You stop. Because I need to know Jesus' forgiveness of my sins. Alright, that's already happened. What do I do now? In Luke 3 today, what do they kept saying? What do I do? What do I have to do? Amen? Now, the second thing he says, back with me to Peter. I really want to get into probably, it'll be more next, next time, uh, your unique giftedness. And this, this is a life changer. Sister Marie. Father Bill, this is so powerful. I mean, they, they had the Savior with them, and they were still falling back. They're still blind. I mean, they didn't even know what to answer him no. in verse 40. They're just sitting there. Because they were about they, answers. Right. They were about, yeah, what we do. We want the answers. And now, answer. let me give you a little clue on answers. Wow. How many ever want answers from God? Yes. It's not about answers. Listen, listen. Holy Spirit, help, help me to get this to you. Stop asking God for answers 
Tell him, here's, here's the process. I will use you in getting the answer. Here's what you got to do. And that's much better than getting an answer. Because you know who Mary is over here, Mary? Do you know what Mary said? Make a miracle of my life. You haven't said that yet. Brother Max. Yes, uh, Father, when we pray, you know, according to scripture, when it said that, uh, ask and you shall receive. And when we pray, we are anticipating for But how many people do you know ask and have received? <laughs> That's why we are anticipating for the answer. You got it. Not the answer. Anticipation. What God will do. And because what's supposed to do when you get the answer? Glorify God. Do you do that? No. No. Because. What do you want? You want the answer. Jesus already knows uh, what we need. What we, what we don't Can you see that we're not praying right? We have to trust. I need to do a new primer on just how to pray. Yeah, let's do that. Because how were you raised? Our Father, Hail Mary, and a glory be. So if I said to you, pray for me, and please do, what will you say to God? Our Father, Hail Mary, and a glory be. Which, which is a great thing to do. Okay? But what do you, you and know, I tend to do? Oh, wait, 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 It was fast. Alright, go with me to first Peter. Go with me to first Peter. Alright, All right, now we're going. Are you getting the idea of anticipation? The second thing is your holiness is you gotta be sane and you gotta be what? Sober. Okay. Second thing is he, he brings up there first Peter chapter four above all. First Peter 4, 8. Above all, unfailing, be love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. The second thing is, there's got to be the vertical and the horizontal, right? Now, let me give you the Greek. Uh, above all, unfailing, love for one another, since your love covers a multitude of sins. I read line, love covers. The Greek is ectinus. Everybody say ectinus. Okay? Your love covers a multitude of sins. And that's also picked up in James chapter 5. It's also, before that, it's picked up in the book of Proverbs. So Peter liked the book of Proverbs. Okay? So th this, is, this, is, this is really good. Now, when you are fervent and it covers a multitude of sins, it means to be stretched out like a runner going to the limit. You're running? And did you ever run, Brother Michael? You did. Are you still running? Yes. And your legs are saying, when you're over 50 <laughs> and AARP just sent you <laughs> running, and you're saying, your body is not like Michael's, you know, Brother oh, Michael. Oh. And did you ever hear your legs going, ouch. <laughs> and then Brother Michael says, stretch, baby, stretch. <laughs> And you, you, you're inside with spiritual adrenaline. So this is the power of love. You've got to stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Even though you're in pain, you've got to stretch it, stretch it. It means straining your muscles. Straining your muscles, okay. And the Greek says, actinis. It means to stretch your muscles to loving people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have anticipation, People can't bother you anymore. Do you let them bother you? Yeah. They're coming over for Christmas. <laughs> they're coming over. And I know you can't wait till it's January 4th and they're all gone. <laughs> and you passed another round, but you gotta stretch those legs, right? When I go to the Yankee game, and Michael, you never treated me to a Yankee game yet, you're so cheap. So, 
what do they do when they're coming out on the field? You see them kicking and stretching and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to stretch because you don't want your calf to scream later on. Amen. Over the church. Okay. So just Yankees. Go Yankees. Football. Now, baseball. Love does three things. It forgives, it forgives, and it forgives. Let me show you where Peter Bob borrowed. <laughs> You're asking the Proverbs. <coughs> Good stuff? Yes. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Isn't it interesting? The first Pope was into the book of Proverbs. Wow. Go to Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 10. Right. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Peter Barter from there. So, how am I going to have anticipation? A same mind. How am I going to have anticipation? Love. Love. Okay? Everybody loving? Remember, it's not an option for some people. It's got to be every person. What does it mean to love a person? I'm concerned for your welfare. If you want to break it down to bite-sized pizzas. Amen? He says they practice hospitality ungrudgingly to one another. So, what, what is this? this? This is called when I'm anticipating on my journey toward the time is near, what do I got to do? It flows out of me to help everybody around me. Ungrudgingly. That means this. I give you stuff never asking for it in return. Now, we're, we're reminded that <coughs> love touches strangers. Um, what does it mean here if you circle ungrudgingly? Go beyond. Now, I gave you the example many times. Do you all love the people that live with you? Yes. On a good day? Yes. See your next door neighbor? You gotta love them the same way. Are you up to that part yet? I don't even know they're alive, I don't even know they're dead. It's not the same It is, but but in the kingdom. It means, ready? What does it mean practice congratulingly? It means going, going, going beyond. When this happens, anticipation explodes in you. How many like to have real anticipation? When you live in anticipation, Christmas is coming. And you know what I'm going to get? Incredible gifts. I'm going to Israel next month. Is there anticipation? Yes. When Peter passes through security, we're going to have a prayer meeting right among the Jews. And they'll all, dun dun, dun 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 dun. We're going to pray. We're going to glorify Jesus. Amen? Now, here's where we're building toward your giftedness. You're not going to get it, we're going to leave you on a cliffhanger. Well, this, you cancel. Well, cancel. <laughs> Alright, we'll meet in your, we'll meet, we'll meet in Murray's house. <laughs> and everybody bring eggnog and spike. <laughs> so, now, when we have the gifts of the Spirit, it begins to go beyond just Jesus dying for us. Ooh. When that body just turned around, I end where I started. And it starts going out. I never say to the people, remember the cross. That person was a pain anyway. They're gone. No, what do I say? The resurrection. 
we're going to meet together in upstairs. Yeah. And then what do I say after that? And the church is right. Console one, one another. Mm-hmm. That's anticipation. What's mm-hmm. anticipation? Do you know at every funeral mass, anticipation is given out? Mm-hmm. But how many pick it up? Mm-hmm. Well, lady, uh, I just had a beautiful funeral. The church, you know. she, uh, she came up to me. She said, that funeral was spectacular. Mm-hmm. She said, everybody in my family listened. And you know what my family member said? <coughs> We better get back to God. Good thing. And she says, we, we want to come back to God now. That's wonderful. Yeah. And what did I do? I talked about heaven. Mm-hmm. Based on the scriptures. You right. talked in your hearts. Yes. Yeah. And so she came up to me. She's like in tears. They want to come back. They want to come back. They want to come back to God. Now, our time is up? No, he said okay, I, I, about I, I just want to build on this. When you're getting to the gifts of the Spirit, <laughs> This is really incredible. This is. Um, Karen wants a cliffhanger. All right, we'll give you a cliffhanger. <laughs> this is really good. As each one has received a gift. Now, here's where I'll leave on a cliffhanger for you. There are three words for gift in Greek. I'll give you the aim, and then I'll say, and then. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. All right, now. When, when, I, when I heard this, I went nuts. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. What happens to you as you anticipate? You are so gifted with God. How many know the person next to you is gifted with God? But guess what you have done in the church? You sit on your Oaxaca. I'm not cursing at you, it's a city in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> right? Now, when, when you look at the scriptures, there are three words for gift. Remember, you've you got to go beyond the cross. Okay. You're all saved, right. but you've got to get resurrected. Right. And so what have we preached here in the West? The cross, which is a good thing to preach on. Absolutely. Every night I want to hear the cross. Wow. But we forgot to bring you to anticipation. Right. You're a sinner. True. You're bile. True. You all deserve hell in here. Absolutely true. But that really doesn't make you smile at all. But now you got gifts. Wow. This is anticipation. That as I wait for Jesus to come for me, I gotta do something. So he's gotta give me a gift. Even in kitchens. I mean, the Lord gave you a unique gift. She dies things and she just has a good time. <laughs> now, the words, the words for gift is charism. Have we ever heard of reason? Mm-hmm. Yes. Doria. Yeah. Doria. And then. Yeah. 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 It's funny. Then the math equipment. I'm going to tell you what each of them means and to be continued. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. This is your And now I'll tell you what Greek word is being employed right here. Charism. What, do you ever hear that? Yes. Charism? Yes. It means you got grace. Number two. Doria. You know what Doria is? Doria means you have a free, you have a free. It's a free gift. The gift of freeness. Freedom. Freedom. Free gift. You live in free, it's a free, freedom of gifts. So it's a freedom. So when you're a Doria, and you heard me mention this many times in the book of uh, Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 14, 16. Pneumaticon. You see the word in there for spirit. And this is the character of your gift. Wow. So what do you got? These are your gifts when you are a gifted person. And then it's going to explode for you. Next Bible study. You got grace. You got free. And you got character. 
And we're going to put it together for you that you can anticipate a glorious new year. That's a good ending. And see how many? How many know we just read Peter a lot, and we didn't have any idea what it says. <laughs> right on the mark. How many ever read First Peter four before? I think we all have one. Okay. That's why the call of my heart is this, and I don't see it happening. And I tear up. I just wish in our church they would preach biblically. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't even hear the scriptures. Preach the Bible to me. Why is global warming so important to the public? The most important thing to anybody should be the salvation of souls. Yes. In my opinion. Amen. All right. And um, next week we won't be here because they're using the church for mass. Right. So uh, we'll be back on the 27th. Okay. To put all of these three together. All right. Can I say this? Charisma. Okay. And you're going to miss it? Great. What? Oh, you got the charisma, you got the Doria. Okay. You sure you're not fighting with him? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, you just told us how to get through the fiery trials. And when we live like this, you have, you'll have more burdens. Amen. None. And people won't even bother you anymore. Because that's life without Christ. But we have life with Christ. So instruct us, Lord, and lift up our spirits in this holy season. That we may focus on you and the truth of what happened in the Incarnation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Saint Michael, the Archangel, Saint Michael, the Archangel defend, defend us in battle. May our protection, protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him when he humbly pray. And, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The first time there was ever a cross on a building was 430 AD. Wow. It's called Saint Sabina. Oh, yeah. Saint what Sabina, if you want a factoid for you. It wasn't in Manila, Max. You gotta look around. Saint Sabina. The first time somebody put a cross on a building. Wow. Mm -hmm.